Hello, hello everybody. This is Mommy with Flowers by the Bunch. Happy Tuesday. I hope you are all doing well. It is a beautiful day here in Mississippi. Um, I hope it's beautiful where you are. Today we are going to work on some Mother's Day arrangements. So, Mother's Day is May the 7th. Is that right? Is it the 6th or the 7th? Anyway, it's not this weekend, but next weekend. I believe it's the 7th. So, I was going to do a couple specials for Mother's Day, and that's what I thought we would work on today. When you come on, tell me hello, tell me how you're doing, tell me where you're from, um, and we are going to get started. So, the first arrangement, I saw something kind of similar um, on a flower page that I follow on Facebook, um, and the container was a little different, but it was kind of the, it was kind of the same just. It's going to be kind of a gardening theme arrangement. So, I was at Walmart this afternoon and I picked up a couple of terracotta pots. They're fairly small, like this one is, I think it's a three inch, four inch, four and a quarter. So this is a four inch pot and this one is, I believe this is a six inch pot. Six inches is tiny, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's tiny. Okay, so what I've done is I have taken foil paper and foil paper, um, a lot of times we will take foil paper, we wrap plants in foil paper, we line things with foil paper, but foil paper is just, it's a green, well, it comes in different colors, you can get it in different colors, but this paper has a plastic lining on one side and just a foil on the other. So I just took some, I cut it, and I, and I molded it to fit down in this pot. What that's gonna do is give us a waterproof liner, okay? And I'm gonna use some of my Oasis, and so I got a block of Oasis. Now, anytime you see me working with Oasis, it's always soaked beforehand. So we take the Oasis, and when you go to soak Oasis, it's very important that you just lay it on top of the water. So you fill your reservoir with water, and we have like one of those um, dish pans, and we fill it with water. You can put flower food in that water, and then you just drop the Oasis right on top let it soak so it'll sink as it fills up with water and that way it does not leave any air pockets it just soaks up water so it holds water really well now if you press it down into the water to get it to fill um, it's going to leave little air pockets those air pockets are just dry little holes of foam so it's important that you let it soak on its own it does not take very long Victoria's here with me so if you have any questions ask Victoria will be happy to answer uh, well to tell me and I'll try to answer <laughs> so if you have any questions or comments or any of the things please let us know so what I'm gonna do is I'm taking this Oasis I want it to stick up a little bit over my pot so I'm just kind of measuring and I cut me I'm going to use this piece in the smaller pot, but I'm going to use this taller piece in my larger pot. So I'm going to take it and trim this oasis up. It's very easy to cut. You can cut it with a butter knife. I happen to have a little floral knife or a paring knife that I'm using. All right, so I'm just taking that oasis and I'm pressing it right down in to my pot. Now, you're gonna want to fill the reservoir with water because it needs water. Um, so once you get your flowers arranged and all the things, you're gonna fill that little reservoir with water. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some waterproof tape and I am going to tape this foam right down into this terracotta pot. Now I'm fixing to run in there and grab some moss because I didn't get any. So I'm gonna run grab some moss. Give me two seconds. Let's see if I can, oh, look. There's some right here. Ta-da! So I've got a little Spanish moss. Now you can use sheet moss too. Um, I happen to have Spanish moss right here beside me. So I'm just gonna take this little Spanish moss and kind of go around. I 
just want to kind of cover these mechanics, but I think the, this finished moss looks gardeny. So I'm just going to take it and kind of, I want to cover up that tape. But see how that Spanish moss just kind of looks gardeny. So next what I'm going to do is this terracotta pot has a little hole in it. And that is good. Now, it will, once I put this oasis in, the oasis is going to seep water, but it's completely okay because I've got a liner down in this pot. I just took the, um, the little sticker off the bottom. I'm gonna throw that away. I'm gonna take this pot and I am going, these are bamboo skewers. I'm gonna take the pot, I'm gonna run the bamboo, my mouth won't mm -hmm. work, the bamboo skewer, skewers down in and what that's gonna do is hold that pot into place. And I'm gonna use more than three. I'm gonna use three or four. And what that's gonna do is just keep my little pot in place. Now it's kinda of topsy-turvy and that's kinda of what I want. So next I'm gonna take my next little piece of Oasis. Trim it up just a little. And I'm just tucking that right down into that pot. Judy Rodare says hi from Indiana. Hello, Miss Judy. She asks, why don't you stuff the cut scraps down the edges of the pot? I absolutely could. I just didn't. I didn't think about it. Miss mm -hmm. Judy, yes, you can certainly use those little cut pieces. So I did go ahead and tape that um, oasis right down in there. And I'm going to take a little bit of moss. But yes, ma'am, it's, yes, you can absolutely do that. And I should have, but it didn't cross my mind. <laughs> All right, so there's a little moss on that one, and moss is all over my sweater, but that's okay. All right, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of greenery. So I've got this is variegated pit. I'm going to just take a little greenery. So you just kind of want to decorate it like it's, it's growing in the garden. So I'm just taking this pit, I cut it into tiny little pieces, and I am just gonna tuck it down into that pot. I've got some, this is Israeli Ruscus. Tuck a little bit in the top pot. But you can really design it any way you want to. I'm just gonna kind of make it look gardeny. Now the reason I did not line the top pot is because it was going, when I stuck the skewers down in, it was going to drip down in there anyway. And so I just figured why, why waste that, um, that foil to line that pot. I've got some lemon leaf or salal. So that's just lemon leaf. I'm gonna take it and cut it in small pieces. Amy Bryan asks, what sells the most for Mother's Day? Dozens of roses or mixed arrangements? Mixed arrangements. I sell more mixed arrangements at Mother's Day than I do roses. Now we do sell some roses, but mostly mixed. I would say for me personally, um, I would want mixed flowers. Um, but yes, mostly mixed. Okay, so I'm just taking those small pieces uh, you tell me, what would you prefer? Would you prefer mixed arrangements or would you prefer roses? I don't know, roses are beautiful. <laughs> and you feel special when you get roses because you don't get roses very often. Um, I say the only reason I would want a mixed is just because it lasts longer, I feel. A mixed arrangement to me lasts longer than roses. But roses certainly do make you feel special. Mm -hmm. Miss Shirley prefers a mixed arrangement. A mixed arrangement. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like a mix too. All right, so there's a little bit of lemon leaf. So you can kind of see it's kind of topsy-turvy. 
Um, this is Sago Palm. Is that right? Did I say that right? I hope that's right. If it's not correct me, I think it's Sago Palm. It's pretty. Miss Joan asks, is there a name to this design? There is not a name. There's not a name. I should name it. We need to name it probably for our website. Okay, so there's our pretty greens. Now I'm going to tuck a few flowers. What should we name it? <laughs> this is Podocarpus, Weeping Podocarpus. I just love the texture. I like all the greenery because it's just different textures and it's just pretty. And greenery will certainly last a long time. Miss Amy says she would prefer mixed or potted plants. I love a potted plant. I agree. Now, I will tell you that I really like potted plants at Mother's Day, and that's just because they'll last all season. Um, my boys have always been good, too. At Mother's Day, they usually get me something for my patio, whether it's a hummingbird feeder. Micah Thomas likes to get hummingbird feeders. Or um, for my birthday, Owen got me um, wind chimes. I love things that I can put on my patio. And sometimes they'll come with plants and surprise me with plants. But I agree. I really like plants, too. Okay. So, I've got enough greenery. Now, I'm going to tuck just a few stems of flowers. I'm not going to do a whole lot. It's not going to be really, really floral. Um, but I did think it needs some flowers. So, I said some flowers, <laughs> not sunflowers. But I've got a little sunflower. So, I'm going to tuck him right up here in the top. And then I have these pretty little yellow spray roses. I'm going to tuck a few of those in. I love these little yellow spray roses. They're pretty. Miss Ellen says any flowers would make me feel really special. That's <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> Whoops. Throwing stuff on the floor. Thank you, Victoria. Miss mm -hmm. Debbie says hello. Hey, Miss Debbie, welcome. We're so glad you're here. And um, she asks, have you ever used, um, I'm, no, I'm not going to pronounce this right, have you ever used cut caladiums? Caladiums. caladiums. I have In not. I tell you, I don't know. I have never, I don't know if they'll hold up. Um, I think they'll tend to wilt. Now, I say that, and I've not ever tried it. Um, but caladiums tend to be a little bit more of a, um, a softer leaf. And so I'm not positive if they would hold up, but I will. Mama has them usually growing on her porch. Um, I put them in my front <laughs> flower box and the cat keeps digging them up. Um, yeah, Binks keeps digging them up. He digs up everything in that front box. I don't know why I can't keep him out of that front box. But um, I've not, I've never used caladiums. Now I have used hosta but I've never used caladiums before. This is just that butter stock. Tucking a little bit of that in here, just because it's just so cute, pretty. Mm -hmm. It's just pretty. These are moody blue roses. That moody blue is that real purple, a really pretty purple, and it smells beautiful. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I, um, I had these moody blues, and I told you the fragrant, fragrance was amazing, and they smell, I mean, so pretty. So I'm gonna cut those short. So with cutting them short, I'm not going to wire them, just because they're really short. And they smell so pretty. Miss Julie says, love this. Is it for an order? This is not for an order. This is just, we were just practicing with a few Mother's Day ideas. And I saw something really similar um, on one of the Facebook groups, um, Florist Facebook groups that I follow. And I thought, oh, I'm making that or something similar. This is um, Lizzyanthus, pink Lizzyanthus, and I love Lizzie. And it should, this bud should open up pretty good. It should open pretty wide. Um, so I'm going to put just a little bit of Lizzie in here. Miss Sue says, call her Topsy. Topsy, that's a good name. That's a good name. And Miss Gloria says, maybe double potted mixed arrangement. <laughs> that's a good one too. <laughs> Topsy's so cute. 
Miss Betty asks, how are your zinnias doing that you planted by? Oh, them? they're getting so big. I'm going to have to go in and thin them out. And so I have a question for anybody who's a gardener. So I'll show you a picture um, and y'all give me some suggestions. When I go to thin them out, so like they're just, the whole flower box is just full of little tiny seedlings. I mean, like they're probably about this big. When do you need to um, thin them out? Like, and I want to transplant them over into another pot um, because I want to use them. And so I don't know how big do they need to get before I start thinning them out. But they're so, they're getting, they're filling the entire box. Now there are mixed seeds in there also. So I'm, a, I'm thinking that, um, yeah, I mean, I don't even know what's all in there. It's gonna be a surprise box. <laughs> okay, so there's our flowers in this sweet arrangement. I was at the Dollar Tree and I found these cute polka dotted gloves. So I'm gonna pop the, um, the tag off and I thought we would tuck these little gloves. My goodness, the phone keeps ringing. I wonder what's going on. I wonder, yeah, go grab it real quick and just make sure. So I'm just tucking these little gloves right down into the side of this pot. So I've got the little gloves tucked in there. And then I also got a little garden um, shovel or garden trowel. I'm gonna take that tag off. And I'm just gonna take it and stick it right in to that oasis right there. Push it down just a little bit to make sure he stays. Okay, and then these were some little perennial seeds. Um, it just says a perennial mix. And so it's just pretty little seeds. And then this was Larkspur. They were just pretty colors. So I thought this is just a, um, a card pick. And I thought that I would just stick those on that little card pick and tuck those right into that arrangement to make it look like it was a little garden arrangement. And then when the flowers are gone, they have the seeds that they can plant. They have the little gloves that they can use and they have the little garden trowel that they can use. But look how cute and springy that arrangement is. Now it's pretty all the way around. I'm gonna turn it around so you can see the backside too. But see how it's pretty all the way around? So I just thought that was the cutest idea ever for a um, for a Mother's Day arrangement. I think it would be cute for a birthday. Couldn't you see sending that to to a little lady for her birthday? I think that's a great little arrangement. I also we got in some cute containers. So I'm gonna set that one to the side, and I'll take a picture of it for you. We got in some cute um, containers for Mother's Day. Now this is a, um, this is just a metal pitcher um, and it came with a liner. So I lined it with, I, it came with a plastic liner that fit right down in, but I went ahead and lined it with um, some foil paper and then put that liner back down in there. And the reason I did that is because I was just afraid that water may overflow. And if the water overflows being 10, it's going to leak. And that's something that's important that you don't deliver a leaky arrangement because you want it to, um, to stay together. You don't want it to leak on their table. You don't want it to mess up anything. But I really liked this container. I thought this was very sweet and a perfect gift because after your flowers are gone, you could use this on, on a buffet, on a table. You could put artificial flowers in it. You could put it anywhere. Um, and so I thought, I'm not putting the oasis down in here because I was really afraid with oasis, they wouldn't get enough water in there. Um, so it's just filled with water. Um, the liner is about this, this deep probably about four inches or so. And um, so it holds water, but I was scared with Oasis they wouldn't get enough water in there. So I'm gonna start out with this container and I'm gonna use a couple hydrangeas as my base. I lost my knife. Okay, <laughs> I found it. Um, Laura Staler about the roses, she asks, did you take off the guard petals? 
those I did not. I left the guard petals on, but I just love that pink of that of that petal. Um, and I'll show it to you again. Um, but I left, I don't know if you can see it very well, but see that, that guard petal on that moody blue kind of comes off a pink. And it's just beautiful, so I left it. <laughs> um, for me personally, I don't think with a moody blue it looks so much like it's a, it's a damaged petal. Um, it just kind of gives you a, a pretty pink color. Um, but yes, you ha always have to be careful with the guard petals because some people don't like them. But with that moody blue, it's just too pretty to pull off. <laughs> it's just too pretty to pull off. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to the zinnias, Miss Lisa says, I thinned mine out yesterday and they are about two inches tall and replanted the ones I pulled up. You did replant them. And did you just put, like, did you put them in just like a, like a pot, like a terracotta pot? Because I wonder how many do I put in a pot? Like, do, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to overdo the pot, but I certainly don't think two stems is enough. So, I'm just not. Okay, so there are my hydrangeas. I'm going to tuck in a few bells of Ireland for some height. See, I love you guys helping me out with my gardening and all the things. <laughs> I will I will certainly tell you that I am not a master gardener. Now, I enjoy my plants, but I certainly, I don't really know what I'm doing. I know to water them and fertilize them and all those kind of things, but I'm not a master at it by any means, but I sure enjoy them. Lavender stock. Miss Sarah says trains cut up four to six inches at four to six inches. So wait until they get four to six inches. Yes, and I think there was some more. Miss Debbie says that she just Googled about Zinnia thinning and and it is recommended at three inches tall and just after they have been watered. Perfect, okay. Okay, I'll work on that. <laughs> But, my, but you can tell that they're mixed seeds. You can tell that they're not just zinnias. And I was just, I'm kind of afraid that I don't know what I'm going to transplant together, but I guess they'll work, right? It's all, everything that I put into those boxes um, were full sun, and that's what I have at home is all full sun. And so um, I know they'll be fine together because they're all going to be in the same amount of sun that they need. So I'm not worried about that. I just want to, I just want full pretty pots. So this is the um, the guard petals on the moody blue. You see how they've kind of got that really pretty pink. This one's got a little, he's got a bump or two, so I'm going to pull him off. But see how it's kind of got that pretty pink and then it's that pretty lavender down on the inside. So I'm going to leave those guard petals, but if you don't like them, you can always remove the guard petals. Margaret says, I have a jug like that. Mine is yellow. Yours is, oh, mm -hmm. Miss Margaret, I love yellow. I love yellow. I'm going to wire these little moody blues. So I just took just about a two and a half inch wire because it doesn't need to be any longer than that, really. says hello hello what great pretties are you making today oh steve we're working on mother's day today we are just making up a few happies for mother's day just being creative mm -hmm. <laughs> just being a little creative miss lisa says hope you planted some fever for you i don't know because i just planted all mixed seeds that were um were that like sun um but that box that I put the zinnia seeds in, um, I know that there are marigolds coming up in it. And I'm sure there's other things because I think it might even have a sunflower or two. Would sunflowers already be about six inches tall because they are towering over all the other seedlings. And I'm like, oh, you're gonna surprise me and be a tall boy. Drop that on my toe. Miss Valerie asks, why do you wire the roses? I wire the roses because it's going to guarantee that their heads stay, stay up. Um, if you don't wire the roses, 
then I have no guarantee that that head's going to stay firm and stay up. A lot of times their little heads will dip and that's just going to guarantee it's gonna last longer for the customer. All right, so there's the flowers I'm gonna tuck in. I'm gonna tuck in a little bit of dragon because you know I like it. I can't get my drawer to close over here and it's because I've got a bit of sporum stuck in it. <laughs> Michelle Grabbing says, I just met, I think, your mom. Really? And she says she came in a Bell's Nail Bar and I did her pedicure, just loved her. She was a joy. Yes, that was probably, did she look just like me, but she's white-headed? That was mama. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, our, I look just like her. She doesn't look just like me. I look just like her. I mean, to the point where my children were confused when they would see pictures, um, black and white pictures, and say, you would ask them, who is this? And they'd say, that's you. And I'd say, nope, that's Nanny. That's Nanny. And that baby she's holding is me. <laughs> but yes, I look so much like Mama. And Robbie looks just like my Daddy. Except she's got hair and Daddy doesn't. <laughs> All right, so I'm tucking just a little touch. I don't want a whole lot of greenery in this arrangement. Now, we can add ribbon or we don't have to. What do you think? Should we add ribbon? I just don't want it to take away from the fact that it's kind of a picture. Do you think I should add some pretty ribbon? We could add spring ribbon to it. Um, I think I am going to put a couple more pieces. A little spot right there that looks like it needs a little piece of greenery. So this arrangement's very, very simple. It's just got some lavender stock, the moody blue roses, some pretty bells of Ireland, and then a couple of white hydrangeas. So it's not got a whole lot of flowers in it, but isn't it pretty? Wouldn't that be pretty on someone's table? And it looks like a little lady, I think. What do you think? Should we put ribbon? They all want ribbon. They want ribbon. Mm -hmm. Let me go and pick out a few blades of ribbon. Now, or I was looking at blades of grass, <laughs> not blades of ribbon. And I can put some grass in there too. Grass would be pretty. Let me go grab some ribbon and show you what we could use. Let's see. I haven't seen her done do um, arrangements like this in the little pots and the little pictures. So this is fun for me too, getting to see it. Let's see. I feel like I'm learning a lot and <laughs> just sitting here with her during these lives. Oh, I think what she's going to do is she's going to take pictures with and without the ribbon. I think that's what she normally does. Um, so you guys can see it both ways. Picked out, I've got four or five different colors, let's see, or different types. I've got a polka dot, which is just a real neutral. It's kind of a, um, a burlap look or a khaki, and then it's got little polka dots, little white polka dots. This is floral, and it's very floral, but it's got pinks, a touch of lavender, some turquoise, and some yellow. This one I thought was pretty. Mm -hmm. This is a new one we just got in. It's got stripes and it's a hot pink, a lime green, and a purple. I think there's a car out there, Victoria. Um, just a purple plaid. And then, oh, she's leaving. Yeah, she pulled away. And then that one is a purple and white, um, a purple and with a white print and hit close. It just went. And there's a plug in right beside you. So what do you think? Do we want a plaid? Do we want a, a purple and white print, a stripe, a polka dot, or a floral? What do you think? Uh, we have one purple plaid, um, one stripes, oh, two stripes. Two stripes. Oh, three stripes. <laughs> okay. Um, I think the most we have is the stripe. Okay, let's go stripe. And if we don't like it, we'll pull it off. That's the wonderful thing about a bow. You can use it anywhere, right? Okay, so I'm going to talk you through a bow real quick. 
I had someone ask yesterday, you've got to do a tutorial on bows. And I have done tutorials, but I will walk you through how I'm going to tie this bow. Now, yesterday I tied the bows with, um, with just five loops. Now, the reason I like to do an odd loop bow is because both of my streamers are going to kind of come down. It's not a perfect a loopy bow, like if you do um, the tails on both sides, so if you do an even bow, like like three and three, so it's six total loops. If you do an even bow, then it looks like a bow that would go more on a gift or a bow that would go more on a plant. For me, I don't want a gifty bow. I just want kind of a loose, more, um, more artistic bow on here. I don't want just lots of loops. Like a, like a gift bow. So that's the reason I like to do odds on each side. I mean like three loops on one side and two loops on the other, okay? So that's the kind of bow that I'm gonna make today. So I always start out with the front facing me. So here's the front of the ribbon and then there's the back. And you can tell the difference when, you're, when you've got it in your hand. It's kind of hard on the video. Um, so I've got the front of the ribbon facing me and I'm holding the ribbon between my pointer finger and my thumb, just like that, okay? I'm gonna make a loop, however big you want the loop. So I made the loop and I've got it held between my thumb and my pointer. So you see this is the front of the ribbon and that's the front of the ribbon. So I'm gonna twist because I want the print facing me. I'm gonna make another loop. I'm gonna hold it between my fingers, I'm gonna twist so that, that, that um, the front of the ribbon is facing me. So every time you twist, you want the, um, the print to face you, okay? Twist, a loop, twist, a loop. So there is three loops at the top and two loops at the bottom. And then I'm gonna twist one more time to give me one more tail, okay? And of course, Mama King didn't bring any scissors because that's how I roll. There, a pair beside you. Mm -hmm. I've got a wire, and what I'm going to do with that wire is I'm laying it right up underneath that thumb. Okay, I don't know if you can see it on the video. I'm laying that, thank you, darling. I'm laying that wire right up underneath my thumb, and I'm going to bend it towards the, the back of the ribbon. Now, the wire is right here between these two fingers, my pointer finger and my middle finger. I'm going to take this finger. And I'm, I'm placing it right there on top of those two fingers. Now, the reason I do that is because I'm pushing that wire really tight. And I'm twisting. I don't want, I want that wire to be as tightly twisted as possible. And then I'm going to take and fluff my ribbon. And trim up my tails. Now, this is a wired ribbon. This is the easiest ribbon to make a bow with. You'll find if you're going to learn to tie a bow, Wired ribbon is the easiest. So I'm taking it, and now I'm going to attach this bow to a wire pick so that I can pick it over into the arrangement. So I'm just going to twist that wire right onto that pick. Now, I will tag at the top of this when I go into the comments. I'll be sure to post um, my blog post on how to tie bows. And if you're interested in watching a full video on tying bows, um, they're in our videos. So you can go back to our page and look through the, um, like there's a bar and you can find videos and click on it and it'll take you down to bows. Um, I think I did one at Christmas and then I did one back in 2001. It was mm -hmm. one of my earlier videos. Okay, so there's my bow. Now what I did was I just took, so th these are the tails. I always just kind of crimp them. Um, that's all in preference. You can do it if you want to, you don't have to. Um, I don't know why I like them crimped. So then I'm just gonna tuck that right down in the front. And you see it's just not a, a big loopy loopy bow. Oh, I like the ribbon in it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. So there we go, guys. There we go. Miss Judy sent 200 stars. Oh, Miss Judy, thank you for the stars. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, we're going to clean it up and we're going to, I'll run outside and take pictures of these um, arrangements for you so you can see them a little easier and a little better. Guys, thank you so much for being here this afternoon. If you have any questions or comments, you can keep 
quite, keep putting those down in the um, comments and I will certainly answer those for you. Um, I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Please sprinkle this video so others can see it and we will see you tomorrow. Darling, you.